Okay, so this is problem 2e off the review sheet. The one, the one that I put on the test actually has a radical. There's a radical here and a radical there, but this is a good one to work. When you square, you multiply by itself. So just write it twice. Remember, you write it exactly the same. What I see students do is switch this sign. They'll make this one negative for some weird reason. If you're multiplying it by itself, you're writing a copy. And now just do the FOIL. First, radical 8 and radical 8 make radical 64, which is 8. And then the outer, radical 8 times a positive 3 is positive 3 radical 8. So that's done. Now switch to the second one and do the inner. Positive 3 times radical 8 is another positive 3 radical 8. And then at the end, you have a positive 3 times a positive 3, which is positive 9. I'm going to combine the things that go together, which are the numbers, right? 8 and 9 make 17. 3 radical 8s and another 3 radical 8s is 6 radical 8s. No matter how tempting it is to add these numbers together, you can't. This is $17 and 6 apples. You can't make that 23 apples, right, or $23. It just doesn't work. You can't combine them. But what you can do is break the radical 8 down. 8 breaks down with 4 and 2. Right, radical four, radical two. Take this out of jail. Radical four comes out as two. Hook it up with the six. Six times two is 12. And again, like I just said, no matter how tempting it is to add that 17 and that 12, you just, you can't. All right, so this, this is 2E from the practice exam that we did in class. So again, FOIL. If you need to put little ones here, you can put ones here. Four times one is four. Radical seven and radical seven makes seven. Now you do the outer, right? First outer. Four times five is 20. Radical seven and radical three make radical 21. That's it. I did first outer. Then do the inner. Radical three and radical seven is a negative one there. Negative one times one is negative one. And then you get radical 21. And then at the end, right, the last, you get negative one times five, which is negative five. Radical three and radical three make three. Right? Now, you can do four times seven and make 28. You can do five times three and make 15. Don't forget the negative. And then you got to combine these together. You have 20 radical 21s and you lose one of them. That leaves you with 19 of them. 19 radical 21s. Now just do 28, take away 15. Why can you subtract them? Because they're just regular numbers. They don't have radicals. They don't have anything. These are the same creature. This is $28 and you spend $15. That gives you 13. The 19 radical 21 just goes along to the right. Again, you cannot add them because this does not have a radical 21. So they're not like terms. All right, so this is 6A from the practice exam. This is completing the square. So again, in the beginning, you just follow the steps. That, that I showed you, which, which is the first step is to get the number and move it from the left side to the right side, right? You do the opposite of whatever you see. If you see a plus, you subtract it. See a minus, you add it. Here I have a plus, so I'm going to subtract it from both sides. I said to leave a gap here. I'm going to put a number there. So I need to create a space. So now <clears throat> what I told you to do is take this number and cut it in half. Half of negative eight is negative four. Now to complete the square, you have to square that number. So I have to do negative four times negative four. You're always gonna get a positive number. When you multiply something by itself, it's always positive. So negative four times negative four is positive 16. This is what I'm gonna to add to both sides, right? That's the big step. Now this side, you just created a perfect square. You might not realize that you did, but you did. So you put X. Whatever number that you put your little circle around goes here. Whatever half of negative eight was has to go here. So that's negative four. And on this side, you just do negative 17 plus 16. 16 take away 17 is negative one. This is what you want. Why? Because I need to solve this with the square root property. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That's going to kill that square and give me what's inside of it. And the other side, I make sure I put my plus and minus, and I have to do square root negative one. I know what that is. That's I. The square root of negative one is that imaginary fake number I. So then I get here. 
but I need X all by itself. So I have to get rid of the number that's with it. So I'm gonna add that four to both sides, but I have to be careful. I can't add four to this I. I always put it to the left of that plus minus, okay? You have to put it to the left of the plus minus. You cannot do anything else with this. You cannot add, I mean, you have four plus I, four minus I, but those aren't like terms. The number four and I are completely different creatures. So you can't add them together and make this five I or whatever. All right, this is all you can do. Okay, so this is three D from the practice that we did in class. So again, division of radicals, there's no such thing, right? This is that pseudo fake ass BS division called rationalizing. So I'm gonna have to multiply by the conjugate of this. So I keep the first guy the same. I switch that sign and I keep the second guy the same. I mean, all I do is I just make a copy of it and I just switch the sign in the middle. But whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Now on the top, you're gonna get 10 radical eight plus 10 radical three. That's all you can do, just multiply them each by 10. The bottom is a lot harder. You gotta foil this out, so you have to be very careful. Radical eight, radical eight is radical 64, which is eight. Radical eight times a positive radical three, they're both in jail. Eight times three is 24. So you get radical 24. Over here, you have a negative radical three times radical eight. That's negative radical 24. Those are gonna cross out, that's the point of this. Negative times a positive is also negative. Radical three and radical three make three. Cross out those. Positive radical 24, take away radical 24, they cross out. You get eight, take away three on the bottom, which is five. Yay! Why is that good? Because I have a bunch of tens on top. So that's the whole point of this. You're going to divide everybody by five. He's gone, he's gone, he's gone. That becomes a two, that becomes a two. You divide everybody by five. So you get two radical eight plus two radical three. And then you think, yay, I'm all done. I got that shit. And you're like, oh, fuck, wait a minute. Damn it. Radical eight breaks down. Oh, evil, tricky, horrible. You got to break the eight down. Three doesn't break down, but eight does. Eight is radical four times radical two. Take the four out of jail. A lot of twos here, so be careful. Two times two are out of the jail. That's four. Radical two goes along for the ride. And don't forget about your buddy two radical three there. So it was very tricky because of that radical eight. So I'm going to show you, though, real quick what I would do to put this on your test. How I change it is this. On the top, instead of a 10, I'll have a radical three there. Now, I'm not going to do that. But if you want to try to do that, you can. OK, so this is question 4D. And this one is from the review, excuse me, 4B, <laughs> 4B, B is in boy. So solve by factoring. You know, I, I have seen students in the past see the squared and try to dive in there and do the square root. And, you know, that, that's not happening. When you solve by factoring, you want to set it equal to zero to use that zero factor property. So whatever's on this side, you have to get rid of it. So in this case, I have a positive 20x. So I'm going to subtract 20x from both sides. Those are going to cross out and make a zero. That's the whole goal. Get a zero here. I can't combine these because this is an x squared and this is an x. The only thing I can write is 12x squared minus 20x. Now, here's where you have to go back to those factoring lessons. Type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 2 is a trinomial with a one in front. This is not a trinomial. And there is not a one in front of the x squared. You know, this is not a difference of perfect squares. It's not type three. You know, 12 is not a perfect square and 20 is not a perfect square. They have a letter in common. So the only type that that could possibly be would be type one, the GCF, the greatest common factor. So then you're looking for the number that divides 12 and 20. So, you know, you start, start with 12. You know, what, what divides 12? Two, three, four, six, and 12. 12 does not divide 20. 6 does not divide 20. Ah, but 4 does. 4 divides 12 and 20, and it's the largest number that divides them both. So there's not going to be another number. So you're going to divide away the 4, and you're going to divide away the x. 
And I told you in class a million times that if you need to do this, then do this. You don't have to do it in your head. You can put the 4x underneath them and divide them away. 12 divided by 4 is 3. x2 over x leaves you with 1. If you don't believe me, x2 is xx. <laughs> Those cross out and leave you with 1, right? Again, here, negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5. Those x's cross out. And that equals 0 is still there. And I think I said this a couple times in class. If the product of two things is zero, then one of them must be zero. So you take each one of them, set them equal to zero separately. What I love about this question is that it really tests whether you understand a lot of different things. Like here, this is four times X. I see students do this all the damn time where they do this minus four. You can't subtract four. This is not addition. There's no plus. This is multiplication. This is four times X. You're multiplying four by a number and getting zero. That number had to be zero, right? You divide the four away. If you multiply four by some number and you got zero, <laughs> that number better be zero. Over here, you're going to add the five. Those cross out, right? Zero plus five is five and then divide by three. You know, this is, this is solving 101. This is from the remedial math class. We do this there. Right, just solve for X. Here's question one from the practice. And again, it can be tricky because you know the numbers, the numbers are kind of big. And the goal is to write them as a product of smaller radicals. I'm gonna start with the obvious one. To me, that's the most obvious one. 32 can be written a bunch of different ways. You know, eight times four, 16 times two, and then you know you might not be sure. Same thing with 200. You can write this as four times 50. I, you know, you could write it as eight times, uh, whatever, 25. There's like, you may not be aware of how to break them down, but 50, there is no confusion with 50. 50 has to be 25 times two. It has to be. There's no, there's no other way to write 50 down. What do you do? Pick five and 10? You can't. You, the only way to write 50 with a perfect square is to pick 25, which is a perfect square, times radical two, right? There's no other way to do it. Now, as soon as I see this number, I know that I have to write the other ones. I'm going to just fill them in right now. I'm not even going to write anything else. I'm just going to write that. I know for a fact I have to write them all with radical two. There's no ambiguity here. If one of them is written with radical two, they all are. There's no exception to that rule. Oh, maybe one of them is radical three or radical. No. If one of them is radical two, they are all going to be radical two. That's the only way you're going to combine them at the end. So then just cut these numbers in half. Half of that is 16. Oh, it's a perfect square. Yay. Half of 200 is 100. Oh, it's also a perfect square. Yay, it worked. That's the game. They all have to have that same number. So you start with the one that you're certain of. And then whatever number is there in the radical that won't come out of jail, this comes out of jail, perfect square. Comes out of jail, comes out of jail. That is never getting out of jail. You are stuck with that radical two. Now start taking them out of jail. Square root of 100 is 10. Radical two goes along for the right. 16 comes out of jail as a four. The five was waiting for it. Radical two goes along for the right. Oh, minus seven. Negative seven is outside the jail. You're going to multiply it by the square root of 25, which is five. Radical two goes along for the ride. Now start multiplying. He doesn't have anybody to multiply by, so just write him again. Here you're going to do five times four, which is 20. Again, outside the jail. You're stuck with the radical two. Here you're going to do negative seven times five, which is negative 35. Radical two. 10 and 20 make 30. And you're going to take away 35. Right? I like to add first. It's easier. And then 30 take away 35 is negative 5 radical 2. At the end, once, once you've broken them all down and you pulled the perfect squares out of jail, at that point, you're just adding and subtracting numbers. So, you know, that, that's not the hard part. The hard part is here. Breaking them down correctly and then taking them out of jail and multiplying them. At that point, it's just being careful with your signs and not doing anything silly. This is question 
B, B is in boy, from the review, love this question. This question is on the test and it's almost identical to this one. It's scary how similar it is. I only changed it slightly. So again, this is a FOIL problem with complex numbers. So you have to be very careful, right? A plus BI, A plus BI. Multiply the first, negative three times six is negative 18. No problem, easy. Over here, be very careful. Negative three times negative nine is positive 27. And you have the I that goes along to the right. All right, so that's first outer. Inner, you have a positive two I times six. Six times two is 12, the I goes along to the right. Now here's where the trickiness is gonna come in. I have positive two times negative nine, that's negative 18. And then I have I times I, which is I squared. It's very, very, you have to be really careful there. It's easy to make mistakes. This one comes down, negative 18. 27 I and 12 I make 39 I. Now, remember, we do not keep I squared. I squared is equal to negative one. So whenever you see I squared, you put negative one. Now remember, this is a product. This is negative 18 times I squared. So you got to put a negative one and multiply it by that negative 18. But what's going to happen when you do that, this is where the trickiness comes in. Negative 18 times negative one is a positive 18. And now that positive 18 and that negative 18 are going to go cha and cross out. They go away completely. So you're just left with that dude. You're left with positive 39i. The one on the test works out exactly the same. Once you put the i squared negative one in, the numbers will cross out and leave you with only the imaginary part. So this is exactly... <laughs> The problem on the test with just slightly different numbers.